Oh. Don't look at that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, today we're starting a new uh, chapter, and it's going to be on uh, Newton's Law of Gravity. That's what we're going to talk about today. Newton's Law of Gravity and how we used uh, Newton's Law of Gravity to figure out the mass of the Earth. You can weigh the Earth. Good old Isaac Newton. With the help, with help from a guy named uh, Cavendish. Anyway, uh, we all know what gravity is, right? If you have uh, so gravity, uh, you know that if you've got an apple tree. Okay, here's a little apple. Here's Newton over here. He's got that weird those weird hats that they wore. In the, no, he had a wig. So there's his wig. All right, so here's an apple, and here's the moon. Okay. And so Isaac Newton, um, well, I mean, he didn't discover gravity. People knew things fell, you know, they, they knew that apples fell from trees for a long time. But here's what he did. He looked at this apple and the apple fell from the tree and got a bruise. Okay, so he saw that. But then, as far as I know, uh, Newton is the first human being to ever make the connection between an apple falling from the tree and the moon being in orbit around the earth. Now, a great question is uh, to ask is uh, um, why does the moon circle the earth and why does the earth circle the sun and the sun circle the galaxy what what makes all this this happen and all the planets circling uh, you know their respective stars and everything well as far as I know uh, Isaac Newton is the first guy to figure out the connection between this and this. And it's a, a pretty marvelous discovery. And um, of course, he, he, he figured all this out while he was out on, on the orchard, I guess, um, uh, avoiding the plague in London and um, he had nothing else to do. So he decided to describe gravity. And so that's what we're gonna do right now. Now, here's the thing you need to know about this description of gravity. It was um, overturned by Einstein about 100 years ago. A little over, uh, about 100 years ago, Einstein was working out his general theory of relativity, which has surpassed, uh, well, it's, it's just, um, it's overwhelmed Newton's law of gravity. We don't, Newton's law of gravity is not the law of gravity that's used in physics anymore. However, it works really, really well. And it's, it's extremely useful. And so we still teach it today. Even though it's not the accepted law of gravity in physics anymore, it's still really good. Uh, and so we use it. So what did, uh, you know, how, how does this work? Well, if you have two objects, We'll call this object one. It could be the Earth. And here's another object that could be the moon, object two. Here's what uh, Newton figured out. And he didn't do this in an afternoon, okay? This took a long time, a lot of work, and a lot of trial and error. But these are the results. This object has mass. This object ha has mass. They apply equal and opposite forces to each other. Newton's third law still applies. Okay, equal and opposite forces to each other. The moon applies a force to the earth. The earth applies a force to the moon. Now, the amount of force, the magnitude of that force, we call F sub G, is equal to, well, first of all, it's proportional to this mass. If I double this mass, I'll double these forces. 
it's also directly proportional to this mass. If I double this mass, I'll double the attractive force. And then it depends on how far away they are. We'll call that distance r from the center of the Earth to the center of the moon, for example. And it depends on uh, how far away they are squared, though. It's r squared. That is, if you make them twice as far apart, the attractive force between them is um, one-fourth is great. If you make them three times as far apart, the attractive force is only one-ninth as great. So it, it decreases by the square of the distance. Now, it turns out that these are the only things you can change about these objects that will affect the force of gravity. That is, you can change their masses, or you can change how far apart they are, and that's it. But if you'll notice, these mass, uh, this is kilograms times kilograms, that's kilograms squared, over r squared, that's kilograms squared per meter squared. That's not a Newton. That's what Newton discovered. It's not a Newton. So, how do we, uh, you know, how do we get this? Well, we have what's called a constant of nature. It's a number with units that we're going to put in front of here that makes it work. What it really is, it's a number, we're going to call it big G. This is called a physical constant. It is a property of our universe. It describes how strong gravity is compared to other forces that exist in the universe. Turns out it's pretty weak. Gravity is a very, very weak force. You need lots and lots of mass to get a significant amount of gravity. Now, this number right here, this, well, this constant of nature, it's called the universal gravitational constant. I just like to call it big G. Uh, Isaac Newton knew there was a number there, but he didn't know what it was. Because gravity is so weak that in his day, it was not measurable. There was no experiment that could be done to figure out what G was. So Newton, being, so, being very, very clever, he figured out uh, a way of using this equation with ratios so that big G would always cancel out, but he would get a result that made sense. So you can read a little bit about that. Well, this force is also has a direction, uh, and we say that it's in the negative r hat direction. We dealt with r hat before. Uh, r hat means away from some central location. So negative r, r hat means towards some central location. In this case, the central location is the center of the Earth. This could be the moon going around the Earth. But uh, it, it just, if it's two objects, uh, it just means, hey, this force is an attractive force. If it's a repulsive force, you can call it positive r hat. Now, uh, many decades after uh, Newton, a man named uh, Cavendish in England uh, did an experiment where he figured out what G was. Now, if you take this equation and you solve for G, you get this. G is equal to uh, the measured force of gravity times R squared divided by the masses. Okay, I mean, that's all I did was take this equation and solve it for G. Simple. Well, very, very hard to do. Because if you have two measured masses 
trying to measure the force of gravity between those everyday sized objects is extremely difficult. Well, Cavendish did it. And um, I would like you to read section 13.2. It describes the experiment. I don't have time to do that right now because you t I gave you so much time for the take home test. But he did it. He took two masses with the known distance apart and he actually physically measured the force of gravity between them. Turns out he got a very, very tiny number. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Now let's look at the units here. Newtons. Meter squared per kilogram squared. This is a tiny number. Negative 11. Here's what it means. If I put a one kilogram mass right here and one meter away I put another kilogram mass and I put them one meter apart well guess what the force of gravity is going to be? It's going to be 66.7 trillionths of a Newton. Okay, the weight of a snowflake on your hand is massive compared to that force. You see, we're all, we're all massive objects, aren't we? We're all made out of atoms and matter and stuff. So we're all gravitationally attracted to each other right now. But I don't know about you, but, but I'm not feeling it. Not, not feeling the attraction, you guys, sorry. But it's there. It's just that it's so weak that it's overwhelmed by all the forces, other forces around us. Except that right below our feet is an object with enough mass that actually a significant amount of gravity is noticeable. The earth beneath our feet turns out to have a mass of uh, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And you can use this equation to solve for it. Um, so uh, read the book. This is kind of an incomplete lecture because of the lack of time. But read the book. This is actually fairly easy stuff. If you use this as your, your basic equation and this as your gravitational constant. And you can figure out all kinds of cool stuff using this equation.